our faith in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Refusing to be grateful, refusing to be obedient to the one that blesses you day in and day out mm -hmm. is a terrible sign. All right. Refusing to be obedient stands in opposition against God, which by the way, is the definition of sin. Yeah, yeah. Something that many of us do not consider is the fact that being ungrateful mm -hmm. of God, being ungrateful of his blessings, yeah, yeah. that is a rejection of God. Mm -hmm. It is rejecting God as a God. It is rejecting God as a protector. It is rejecting God as a provider. All right, come on. Rejection of God again. Mm -hmm. It is the very definition of sin. All right. All right. Therefore, being ungrateful. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand here today that being ungrateful, it is also the very definition of sin. All that the Lord desires for us is for us to be happy. God desires for us to be content in our soul and the Lord, he moves God. He moves to make our happiness he moves to make our contentment. He moves to make it a reality for all of us. Well, all right. Yet many of us, we are far removed from ever truly being content in our lives because we are so ungrateful. Scripture encourages us to let our conduct be without covetousness mm -hmm. and to be content with our blessings, the blessings that we have received from the Lord, our God. But in our ingratitude, All right. man moves out of lust. Mm -hmm. In our ingratitude, man moves out of jealousy. In our ingratitude, man moves out of covetousness. Yeah. We want more than what God has given to us. Come on. Come on. This thought I tell you today. It reminds me of what we have read in our responsive reading today. All right. All right. This thought, it reminds me of the children of Israel and how they treated God just after they had been freed from their bondage in Egypt. Mm -hmm. You would think that the children of Israel would have been very grateful for their newfound liberty, their newfound freedom. Mm -hmm. Yet scripture shows us that they were anything but grateful for God leading them out of their bondage. Mm -hmm. They were anything but grateful of being on the journey to the promised land. Oh, yeah. 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 Here in the 16th chapter of Exodus, we, we find the children of Israel mm -hmm. complaining. They were complaining to Moses and Aaron because they had no food to eat. We will see them complain there in the third verse. They said to the two, Oh, had we died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread to the full for you, they said, you have brought us out into this wilderness yeah. to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Mm -hmm. And again, they are saying this after they had been set free from their bondage in Egypt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the very next chapter, in the 17th chapter, mm -hmm. you see that the children of Israel were complaining again. Yeah. They were contending with Moses there again about not having water to drink. <laughs> got it, got it. Yeah. These people had just been set free from bondage yeah. and all they are doing is Complaining. Boy, I tell you, they were ungrateful. 
You will often hear me liken our journey through life to that of the children of Israel as they journeyed to the promised land. You see, we are bound for the promised land Mm -hmm. of God's heavenly kingdom. Yes, the journey to get there seems like it is a long one and it can be rather difficult. Mm -hmm. But shouldn't we be thankful to be on this journey? To be on this journey to heaven. Shouldn't we be thankful in the first place? You see, not everybody has chosen to be free from their bondage. The bondage I'm speaking of now is the bondage of sin. We have chosen it. But not everybody has chosen to be free from the bondage of sin to be on this journey to God's heavenly kingdom. So we should be grateful today, shouldn't we? So again, I feel I must ask you today, how grateful are you to be on this journey? How grateful are you to be on the journey to God's heavenly kingdom? Are you grateful for all that the Lord has done for you thus far on your journey? Or are you finding something to grumble about? Are you finding something to complain about? I would ask you today, are you happy? I would ask you today, are you content with the Lord or are you contending with the Lord on every step of your journey? Are you contending with him every step of the way to the heavenly kingdom? I want you to see today just how thankful that you ought to be that he is the Lord, our God. I believe that every last one of us, we have reason today to be grateful for the Lord. I believe that we have reason today to acknowledge that he is the Lord, our God. As I just mentioned moments ago, scripture from the 16th chapter here, the book of Exodus, it takes place after the children of Israel had been freed from their bondage of Egypt. It takes place after they had crossed the Red Sea. Now, you you may recall just a couple of months ago how I preached about the Lord as a good shepherd Mm -hmm. and how he had protected the children of Israel from Pharaoh and his army as they stood trapped at the Red Sea. You may recall that I preached about how God, he made a way for them as he parted the Red Sea and he guided them over the Red Sea on dry ground Mm -hmm. with setting them free from the bondage of Egypt, the children of Egypt, they, uh, the children of Israel, I should say, they should have been very grateful for the Lord. God had done much for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet all that the Lord had done for them was seemingly not enough for the children of Israel as we have seen their complaint about God leaving them there to starve Mm. their complaint about how God had left them there to go thirsty in the wilderness again I ask you today how many of you believe that the Lord has left you to go hungry and thirsty figuratively speaking while we are on our journey, mm-hmm. whether you are in a wilderness or whether you are going through a valley or whether you are going over a mountain, how many, how many of you believe today that the Lord has left you to go hungry and to go thirsty along the way? Even though the children of Israel were complaining about not having food to eat, mm-hmm. we will see here in my key verse for today that the Lord he moved. We'll see that God moved to tend to the needs of the children of Israel here. All right. All right. The Lord, we will see, say there, he said, I have heard your complaints mm-hmm. is what we see God say there in that verse. And then the Lord said at twilight, you shall eat meat. And in the morning, you shall, you will be filled with bread. Is what we see the Lord say there in my key verse for today. 
Now, I feel I must ask again, how many of us would tend to someone when all they do is complain and complain? How many of us would continue to help somebody when all they do is complain about the help that you are giving them? I don't know about y'all, but I'd be slow about it. I ain't going to lie to you. I'd be slow about it. I'd be slow to pick up my feet and, and to move somebody, to, to move to help someone that's all they're going to do is just complain about how I'm moving to help them. Complaining about I'm not moving fast enough or I didn't do enough. I'd be slow. I, y'all may be more better. Y'all may, y'all might be better than I am. I, I just believe that most of us wouldn't put up with the complaining for too long. If I, if I'm speaking truthfully there. Andrew said, that's me. Thank you for being there with me, Andrew. This ungrateful complainer is most likely the last person that we would ever want to do anything for. But thankfully, God is not like us. We will see that God had said to Moses earlier in this passage of scripture. There in the fourth verse. After hearing the complaints of the children of Israel, God said, behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And for the people, the Lord said, the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day. Every day. Not some days highlight underlined in your Bible. God said every day circle Mm -hmm. circle that for me, please. Mm -hmm. Every day. Now the bread that rained down from heaven. Some of us will know was called manna by the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Scripture we'll see here in this chapter. It stated that manna formed from the dew of the ground, said that it was white. Mm-hmm. Most importantly, it said that it tasted really, really good. It was delicious. God ain't going to give something that's sour. Right. God ain't going to give something that's bitter. Mm-hmm. Said that the manna tasted like wafers that was made with honey. Mm-hmm. It was sweet. It was good to the tongue. Now, let's point out the fact that even though they had complained, God said that he was going to give this manna to satisfy their hunger, said he was going to do it every day, every day. The only day that manna did not form on the land was on Sabbath. That was because they wasn't supposed to labor on Sabbath. That was we seen them in our Sunday school lesson today. Since they were not supposed to do any hard labor on Sabbath, the children of Israel, they were to gather twice what they would normally gather on the sixth day so that they could have food for the seventh day. So I want you to see this. God was meeting their needs. God met their needs liberally. Do you know that the Lord supplies your every need liberally? In the 23rd Psalm, David said that at God's table, the Lord anointed his head with oil. And that the cup that was on the table, Mm -hmm. David said it ran over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was David speaking of how God blesses those that belong to him. Do you realize that when the Lord supplies your needs, God doesn't go half measures. Mm -hmm. God doesn't meet your need halfway. No, God supplies your every need to the point that your needs are not only met, but there is room to spare. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if you understand that today. But I tell you today that God is a good God. Even when we are contending with him, because none of us are perfect, we are going to have those days where we grumble. We're going to have those days where we complain. I know I heard somebody say, oh, no, I don't do it. Oh, you better believe you do it. All of us do it. I do it. I ain't perfect. Don't you begin to think for yourself that you are perfect. Even in the days where we contend with the Lord in our grumbling and in our complaining, God is a good God. Have you ever wondered why the Lord puts up with us the way that he does? Yeah, and I tell y'all today that he is the Lord, our God. <clears throat> I believe that in order for us to answer the why, I believe that we must remember what John said in his first epistle. When John said that God is love. Mm-hmm. By now, we should know that our idea about what love is does not compare to the love of God. You see, when the Lord moves, he does not move out of ego. God does not move out of selfishness. God moves with a selfless and an unconditional love. As Paul wrote to the Corinthians, In 1 Corinthians and the 13th chapter, love suffers long and is kind. It does not envy, nor does it parade itself, nor is it puffed up. Love, Paul said, does not behave rudely, nor does it think evil. God, uh, Paul was defining love, but I want you to know today that at the same time, Paul was defining the Lord to us as well. Because again, God is love. As I said earlier, our idea of love, it lacks, it lacks impatience. And our love, it will quickly grow tired of ungrateful people. Yet true love, the love of God, it endures all things, even our ungratefulness. The Lord, he could have easily left the children of Israel and their ungratefulness right there in the wilderness to starve to death. But that's not how the Lord, our God operates. The Lord, he had a promise to keep to them. And I tell you today that he has a promise to keep to all of those who are of true faith. In order to keep his promises, God, his love, it must endure. Of God's enduring love, Moses said to the children of Israel that the Lord would never leave them, nor would the Lord forsake them. And I tell you today that we know this to be true from our own personal walk of faith. God has never left us. God has not forsaken us. No matter what we have gone through in our good days, in our bad days, in our worst days, in the highest of our highs and in the lowest of our lows, The Lord has never forsaken us. God has never left us. God, I believe, was being so patient with the children of Israel there in the 16th chapter of Exodus and then throughout the rest of their journey. I believe he was being so patient there because he knows what they could have been. He's so patient with us today because he knows what you and I can be. God knows our full potential through the gifts that he blesses us with. God knows what we can be. God knows what we will be. God knows what we can do. 
and what we will do and where we will go. So the question was asked, why does God put up with us the way that he does? Why does the Lord bear with us the way that he does? Let's answer because we know the answer now. Firstly, the Lord does this because he is love. And because, therefore, he loves us. As Paul said about love, God does not think evil about us, nor does he seek for us to fall down. No, the Lord, he bears all things. The Lord, he believes all things. The Lord, he hopes all things. And God, he will endure all things for us because he is the Lord, our God. Yeah, yeah. And again, he is love. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the Lord, he bears with us because in his love, he desires to uplift us. The Lord, he desires to uplift us. He desires to supply our every need. Mm -hmm. Just as we have seen here today with the children of Israel in my key verse. Mm -hmm. By supplying manna to the children of Israel, by supplying it to them daily, we know that the Lord supplied their needs again. He supplied their needs liberally. They were able to gather and to take in all that they needed in order to be full and all to be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, we will see something else here mentioned in our key verse here. Thirdly, we'll see in scripture or better yet, the fourth verse, I should say there in the fourth verse, we'll see that the Lord, he still moved for the children of Israel, though they were being ungrateful because the Lord wanted to see if they would walk in his law or not. So why would God, why would he care whether or not they would walk in his law or not? Well, this goes back to a point that we have actually already seen established here in today's message. In our key verse, notice that the Lord wanted the children of Israel to know that he is the Lord. God wanted the children of Israel to recognize him. The Lord wanted them to recognize him, to recognize his love. God desired that they recognize that he brought them out of Egypt and that he was blessing them along the way to the promised land. He desired their gratitude. The Lord, he desired their faith. So I would ask today, why does the Lord care about whether or not you and I walk according to his will and according to his way? Why does God care if we keep, if we are obedient to his instructions? The Lord, he desires that we recognize him. The Lord desires that we recognize his love. God desires that we recognize he gave a sinful world, his only begotten son, so that we can be freed from the bondage of sin. So on our journey, the Lord desires our gratitude. The Lord desires that we appreciate all that he has done for us. The Lord, he desires our faith in return today for again, all that he has done for us. In other words, I want you to know today that God wants to be loved. God wants to be loved because again, he is the Lord, our God, and he is moving and has moved on all of our behalves. Don't you believe that the Lord is worthy to be loved today? 
Yes, God's works for us, they stand as a sign of his love. But I want you to also know today that his works, they stand as a sign of his faithfulness towards us. Mm -hmm. God, he endures our unrighteousness, Mm -hmm. our transgressions, our trespasses. God, he, he endures our iniquities. He endures our sin because he is faithful. So for all that he has done through his faithfulness to uplift us, God, he desires our genuine faith in return. You see, as I said in our Sunday school lesson this morning, faith, it is not dictated of us. It is a choice. Mm -hmm. It is a choice and we must genuinely choose to love. We must genuinely choose to believe in him in our hearts today. If we would recognize, if we would appreciate all that the Lord does for us, I tell you today that it would truly mean a lot to the Lord. Firstly, Recognizing all that the Lord does for us, that is a sign of our gratitude. Secondly, when you think about it, when we appreciate all that the Lord has done for us, we would repeatedly return to him. We would go to him because of all the good that he has done for us, because we know what he can do for us. That is why we will return to him. So if we think about it even more, we would think about our happiness, how the Lord has made us happy in our hearts today. And in returning to him, we will become more and more thankful for all that the Lord does for us. I tell you today that I believe the Lord moves even more swiftly to bless all of the believers, those that are grateful for him, for all that he has done, all of those that are grateful, the Lord will swiftly move to continue to bless us because we continue to have faith because we continue to return to him because we have submitted ourselves in the genuineness of our hearts to his will and to his way. We have committed ourselves to his instructions. And because we have done this, the Lord will swiftly move on our behalf. Mm -hmm. As we head into the holy season, I again, I wonder this year whether or not we truly appreciate the Lord. I begin to wonder, do we recognize him? And then I ask again today, are you thankful for all that the Lord has done for you? Even in your grumbling, even in your complaining, your ingratitude, when you are ungrateful, do you turn around and when you finally get that blessing that you've been moaning and complaining about, do you turn around and say, thank you, Lord? Or do you say, finally, about time, I often wonder how often we come off like the children of Israel who ended up at one point not appreciating God's liberal supply of the manna. And they, at one point in time, didn't even appreciate when the Lord had brought them to the promised land. I began to wonder, are we becoming them? Not appreciative of all that the Lord has done for us. God, we say, has brought us a mighty long way. Mm-hmm. He's brought us over hills, over mountains, and through valleys. But how many of us are saying thank you? And how many of us are saying, huh, about time, about time, God, move for me? Again, I tell you today that we are making our way to the promised land of heaven. And I tell you today that God is supplying our every need along the way. 
Yet, how many of us are contending with the Lord and being ungrateful and unappreciative of him on our journey? Do you know what makes our contending with the Lord even worse today? The fact that we know that he is the Lord, our God. The fact that we know that because he is Lord, our God, we know that he is still moving liberally for us. We know that God is moving on our behalf. Yet we take a bunch of time to be ungrateful, to not be thankful for all that God has done for us. I want you to understand today that we may not receive the same manna from heaven that the children of Israel received, but we, his faithful children, we do receive manna from the Lord today. Manna today is the ability to have the resources to go out and to have a place to call home. It is the ability to have the resources to go out and to buy a car, to buy a truck, to buy an SUV. Our manner today is being blessed by the Lord. Amen. All that he provides for us. When he makes a way for us, that is our manner today. We may not receive manna in the same form as the children of Israel, but manna today is the ability to pay a mortgage, to pay rent, to pay a car note, to pay utility bills, to pay an electricity bill, especially when it seemed it would be impossible for us to do so. Manna again, we may not receive in the same form as the children of Israel, but manna today is the blessing to be able to put clothes on our back, to put shoes on our feet. Manna today is the ability to have food on the table to eat and to have something to drink. And we are able to do these things day in and day out. God again continues to bless us. He blesses us liberally every day of the week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. These things the Lord do for us, even when it seemed um, impossible, yet we are blessed by the Lord. We may not receive manna from heaven in the same form as the children of Israel, but I tell you today that manna is the blessing to be cared for in our physical, in our mental, in our emotional, and in our spiritual health. The resources are there for us to be able to make it so long as we choose to consume and to be content with the manna that God has provided us today. I hate to think about where I would have been just a few years ago had I chosen to contend with God on this journey. Had I chosen not to consume the manna right. that was given to me. I don't know if I would be standing here with you today, but here I stand because my faith was true. And I learned to consume that manna that the Lord continued to provide for me. When me and mom would self dialyze and I didn't have to go to a clinic. When I got the call for a new kidney and we didn't hesitate to go down to that hospital. When I wake up today and I have to go and have blood drawn once a month, I do it without hesitation because I'm grateful for that donor that passed away for me to have a new kidney. I'm grateful for today the way that God has made for me to be able to stand here today to preach a word to you today, to teach a Sunday school lesson to you today. God has made a way for me today and I don't take it for granted. I have health and strength today. You too have health and strength today but how many of us are taking it for granted? In contending with the Lord. How many of us are not appreciating what the Lord has done for us? 
I tell you today that we should certainly know better than to contend with the Lord, our God. We don't want to fool around and end up getting our butt whooped by the Lord because we chose to contend with him. You see, in our contending with the Lord, the only thing we actually managed to do is slow down our receiving of the Lord's blessing for us. So I, I, I encourage you today to stop it. Let us stop doing this and let us begin to appreciate all that the Lord has done for us. I tell you today that the Lord, our God, he is our God. And I hope that you know that the Lord is your God. And I hope that you recognize that today. How many of us are being faithful to him in appreciating all that the, the Lord has done for us and all that he is doing for us? If we truly recognized all that the Lord has done and is still doing for us, I tell you today that churches will be overflowing. If we truly recognized all that the Lord has done and still is doing for us, we will live in total submission to his will and to his way in appreciation for all that he has done. I am so thankful this holiday season. And then I tell you, I am so thankful every other day of the year because he is the Lord, my God. And I tell you that my God, he is awesome. He is so awesome and he has been so wonderful to me. God, I tell you today that he is worthy of my thanks and I tell you today that he is worthy of my praise. And I say to you, I also know for a fact that God is worthy of your thanks and that God is worthy of your praise. Amen. 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 Amen.